one of the International Space Station's solar array wings on the last shuttle assembly mission, teams on orbit and in Houston replanned on the fly to get that wing safely tucked away. The team preparing the spacewalks on mission STS-117 had a little time to build on that work and to learn the lessons from installation of the P3-P4 truss segments on the prior flight. We've taken those lessons and applied them to what we're doing so that we can try to work around some of the limitations in, in the hardware there that we've or they experienced. Jim Riley's been working on this flight since late 2002, shortly after his three EVAs to install the International Space Station's Quest airlock. His spacewalking partner on this mission is first-time flyer Danny Olivas. The second pair of spacewalkers includes another ISS EVA veteran who's grateful for the chance to have seen others do the work he's preparing for. And we do a lot of training here, a lot of simulations, uh, but to be able to watch another crew on orbit do the mission that you have trained for is always a great thing. It's almost like a dress rehearsal for a play. Uh, we would get up in the middle of the night to watch their spacewalks, to watch their robotics operations, just to see if there's anything that we can learn from them. Forrester's spacewalking partner is Steve Swanson, another first-time flyer. The day after Atlanta's docks to ISS, Swanson will help Riley and Oliva suit up for the first EVA, while pilot Lee Archambault and flight engineer Sonny Williams maneuver the S3-S4 truss to its installation position with the station's Canadarm2. Once it's there, Forrester commands motorized bolts to join the new component to the S1 truss, and the spacewalkers exit the airlock. Now the way it works out in our EVA is that Jim Riley kind of has all the real estate on the front side of the truss segment and I have all the real estate on the back side of the truss segment. While um, one of the first things that happens after the, the installation has occurred is we have to basically start uh, putting Keep Alive power to all the, the subsystems on S3, S4. And I'll be at the S1, S3 interface where we've just joined everything together and we have two utility trays. Uh, the Nader one and the Zenith one. And the very first thing that I'll be doing is Danny passes me, we'll be getting ready to open up the cover and start making the connections with the data cables first and then the power cables second uh, to the S3, S4 element. So while Jim Riley takes care of that, my primary responsibility will be to start to get the solar array blanket boxes in the, from their stowed configuration and get them ready for the deploy configuration. And we have a variety of restraints on those, those boxes that we'll have, to, we'll have to pop those off and uh, get them ready. And I'll do that for both the front side and the back side. After Riley finishes the cable connections, he removes a keel pin that held the new element secure in the shuttle payload bay and then moves out to the end of S4 to deploy the beta gimbal assemblies supporting both solar arrays. Once Olivas prepares the photovoltaic radiator for its later deployment, he joins Riley at the end of S4. The two of us will be out on top of the solar array rotary joints, which are the, the what was called the mass canister, and we'll be moving the blanket boxes and basically unfolding those things uh, so that the very next day we can unfurl them. If enough time remains, Riley and Olivas will install one of two drive lock assemblies the gearing mechanisms which drive the solar alpha rotary joint and remove some of the Sarge launch locks and restraints to get a head start on activities planned for later in the flight. The original plan for this flight's second spacewalk centered on getting the truss's new alpha joint ready to rotate so the new solar array wings can track the sun. But there were difficulties retracting the port solar array wing on the P6 truss on the previous flight. Retraction of the starboard wing is part of this mission, so a new plan was devised. Because of the retraction problem we had in STS-116, they ended up actually having to add a fourth EVA. Now we're going to try and avoid not to, not to do that, and so what we're going to do is try and get out in front of it and be prepared on both EVAs 2 and 3 to assist in the retraction of that solar array at the beginning of those EVAs. While Pat Forrester and Steve Swanson get ready for the second spacewalk, commands will be sent to start retracting the P6 array. And we think within a couple of uh, retracting at a couple panels, we're going to have a good idea whether we'll see the same sorts of problems they saw with the 4B array on STS-116. Those problems were wing panels folding in the wrong direction and guide wires and grommets snagging as the panels were pulled back toward the blanket box. 
Forrester and Swanson will be ready to head up to the top of P-6, armed with the tools left behind by spacewalkers Bob Kirby and Christopher Fugelsang in December. I will be on the mass canister while Pat Forrester is on the arm, and we will assist in any areas they need. Uh, the first problem they think they might uh, need is if it folds the wrong way in the first flap. And it basically ends up being about a three foot long uh, stick that I can use to, to poke at that solar ray a little bit and, and help bend it. I would push along the hinge line if it's trying to fold the wrong way. The other thing is that sometimes uh, there's a possibility that these guy wires that help uh, guide the solar ray down into the box uh, can get hung up on the panels themselves, in which case I'll use this same tool or another tool that they uh, have kind of manufactured and help that assist that along the hinges or the, uh, uh, where the guy wires run through the panels themselves. After an hour or so there, Forrester and Swanson will move out to the new Solar Alpha rotary joint and pick up with the original plan. They start by deploying four braces in the Sarge to strengthen the intersection of the S3 and S4 truss elements. Next, Forrester installs a second drive lock assembly. This is uh, basically the brains and the motor which allow the, the outer portion, the S4, to turn. And it's just a gearing mechanism that uh, fits between the two pieces of equipment and then rotates that outer joint. At the same time, Swanson uses his pistol grip tool to start removing the remaining locks that held the joint in place during launch. Forrester joins in after finishing with the DLA. They are all covered by uh, thermal covers, we call them, and we'll remove those covers, uh, then reach in and remove those launch locks, and they are basically about a, a 10 by 12 uh, steel plate being held on by four bolts. We'll remove those launch locks, and then we'll put those thermal covers back on for protection. There's also launch restraints, which are on the beams that go, uh, the support structure of the truss that also hold it all together. So we'll have to remove those also. Uh, and, that's, and some other braces and other stuff that um, help the structure uh, work well during uh, the times so the joint has to rotate. The astronauts who removed the launch locks and restraints from the Sarge on the port side of the truss last year encountered some bolts that didn't want to come loose. The engineers have provided Forrester and Swanson with some extra leverage. And so they took a torque multiplier that's in the inventory that was used for uh, shuttle payloads uh, and we have modified it so that it will fit on these bolts and using that we don't think we'll have any problem pulling any of the launch restraints off. At the end of EVA2, the new solar array wings on the S4 truss will be ready to track the sun and boost the power generating capacity of the U.S. segment of the space station. The third spacewalk of STS-117 sends Jim Riley and Danny Olivas out for their second EVA of the mission. EVA-3 is a very dynamic uh, EVA right now, and to be quite honest with you, we're probably not going to have the final script until the night before. That's because the plan is contingent on whether or not the solar array wing on the starboard side of the P-6 truss has been fully retracted. If not, that becomes the top priority for the spacewalk. Riley gets in a foot restraint on the station arm, and Olivas positions himself atop the truss near the mast canister. Our objective will be to go out and do pretty much what uh, Bob Kirby was doing, and that is just smoothing out any of the, the hang-ups that we get on the guide wires, uh, look for any frays like they saw on the, the opposite solar array panel, work those out so that they can run smoothly, and then, uh, then slowly retract the entire array till we get it completely retracted. Unlike the previous crew, these astronauts have had the luxury of an example to learn from. Based on the lessons learned from STS-116, we should have a more efficient plan for dealing with the problems, but this uh, array may have a completely different set of problems than one that were seen during STS-116, so we'll just really have to see what we get. As time permits, there are other priority tasks for Riley and Olivas to complete on the third spacewalk. Riley moves to the forward end cone of the Destiny Laboratory to install a hydrogen vent for the new oxygen generation system in the U.S. portion of the station. That OGS component is already on station. Our job will be to go and replace a vent uh, that will allow hydrogen to be dumped overboard rather than having to be stored on, on board. So I'll be taking a panel off the end of the lab and replacing this vent.